Don't you worry about cholesterol, lung cancer, love handles? I don't worry about anything anymore. What makes you so special? Everybody worries about something. Well, that's exactly what makes me so special. I don't even have to floss. All right, Groundhog Day. Seems thoroughly relevant right now, so I thought it might be a laugh. Let's have a bash at the humongous breakfast that Bill Murray's character orders when he realizes he's just reliving the same day over and over again without consequence. I think we can, uh, we can all relate to that. And it's kind of tricky to figure out what he's got going on with this order, but if we freeze frame right here and take a look in forensic detail, we can see donuts, cake, a milkshake, cream puffs, lemon tarts, pastries. I'm not entirely sure what this thing is, but it looks like some kind of pecan coffee cake. We got orange juice, biscuits, pink wafers, Oreos, huge plate of pancakes with some eggs and bacon. Although you might have uh, sussed that I've kind of undercooked the bacon a little bit. <laughs> it looks a bit anemic, but um, I was in a rush. I'm hungry today. I'm sure it still tastes good. And although we never see it, Phil's character refuses the doggy bag like a champ and says he's going to stay as long as it takes to finish all the food. So I thought in the name of science, we should probably figure out if it can be done. So without further ado, this is Bibby's Food and this is the Groundhog Day Breakfast Challenge. Who's good? Did you get mentioned Andy McDowell in like three videos now? That's weird. All right, time's going. Much sure that's the best place for it. I'll throw up a calorie count on screen and uh, we'll get started. It's true. What's up, Ben? Welcome back to yet another, and uh, actually on this occasion, quite pertinent video as we uh, as we navigate another lockdown. Uh, yeah, this is the um, the Groundhog Day Breakfast Challenge. I've had worse bacon. Not much worse, but. <laughs> The rest of this is pretty much dessert. i put some uh, some honey on the pancakes here. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Isn't maple syrup a more traditional topping for pancakes? Well, yeah, you'd be right, but you know, I'm trying to eat healthy this year. <laughs> All right, breakfast is done. <sighs> Next we'll do the pastries. I love cinnamon. Uh, who doesn't? Especially when it's, you know, encased in pastry and, and brown sugar and stuff. It's definitely in my top three, you know, aromatic condiments. <laughs> That's something a more practical way to pack muffins. You have some kind of weird looking oat muffin. So this is a, this is like the closest I could get. Whoa. I think this is like a brown muffin. Ugh. It's like eating sawdust. There was some filling in the middle, but <coughs> but not enough to make it moist enough to enjoy. Uh, I'm saying nothing. Ugh. Right, next we'll do the donuts. Look at that. I didn't notice at the time, but that is a slick shot of the coffee cake. At least I got something right. You might be able to tell there's a slight malfunction with the microphone, which is why this video sounds terrible, but you know, I'm sorry. It happens. This is an Oreo donut, which he doesn't actually have in the film, but it's hard to make out what donuts he has or even how many. It looks like four or five to me. Four, five, could be six. Ooh. It's hard to tell. Who's counting anyway? Look at the size of my cake. It's way bigger than Bill Murray's. Right, what next? Let's do this big piece of, uh, of chocolate cake. Yeah, why not? Big slice of chocolate cake. Tell you, nothing uh, nothing replenishes the glycogen stores like a good old slab of cake. I would try and push it in all in one go. <laughs> like he does in the film, but having a beard is not conducive to that kind of behavior. It would go everywhere. Yeah, I think that is by far my favourite scene in the film where he just stuffs in one big slice of cake in one mouthful and Andy McDowell gazes on with a, a very familiar look of disdain. <sighs> right, what next? Maybe the giant... Uh... Oh, God. Ugh. This is messy. So he has some chocolate cake on the table, but the, the, the cake he actually eats Looks kind of like birthday cake. It's just a really kind of bright and vibrant looking cake. 
a bit like this one. There's plenty of icing on there. Yeah, as you'll soon be able to tell by the amount that gets stuck to my fingers and beard. Don't worry though, we'll just time lapse it for the sensitive viewers. Ooh, actually that was a little graphic. We'll get it though. Yeah, we got we got the towel. Towel to the rescue. It's fine. Next we'll do uh some of these pink wafers. Yeah, they call these pink panthers, right? For the purpose of commercial enterprise. That's my Peter Sellers impression. <laughs> you know, historically. These things have stood the test of time, but I used to hate them when I was a kid. They're not too bad now, but I don't know why anyone would choose to eat them. I didn't actually know these existed in uh, in America. I thought these were a, a, a British thing. Hey, you know, it's, uh, it's important to keep learning throughout lockdown, and uh, that's the, the one fact I learned this week. I thought they were a British institution. Turns out they're not. Chocolate butter cakes. <laughs> Which um, I think you'll agree is a funny name. Um, I don't think he has these um, in the film, but he has some kind of chocolate covered biscuit or cookie if you're American. I just can't really figure out what it is. So this is as close pretty much as I can get. Yeah, some kind of chocolate covered biscuit. These are uh, Choco Leibniz um, butter cakes, which apparently uh, translates to butter cookie. Um, whatever they are, they're, they're pretty delicious. Onto the Viennese whirls now. He also asked the, uh, the waitress to, uh, quote, keep the coffee coming. She doesn't bring it to him in a, a Radio Norwich cup, though. <laughs> Instant love heart for whoever can tell me what this, uh, what this mug is from. Oh, we're almost done. How about I try tackling this, uh, this coffee cake thing. Yeah, coffee flavored desserts. It's kind of an area of contention for me because they can be good if you do like a really light, well done tiramisu. They, they can be enjoyable. Coffee cake is a little bit harder. This was like a, a five out of 10. Oh. The orange juice actually was a a tactical advantage there because I'm not the I drink a lot of coffee, but I'm not the biggest fan of coffee-based desserts. They can be good, but a lot of the time they're kind of over overdone. You know, they're a little too bitter. But the orange juice, <coughs> being acidic, um, helped out quite a lot with that. I think he has Viennese whirls or whatever the the American equivalent of these is. Um, but again, it's hard to make out. Just something round and chocolatey and full of goo. Viennese Wills, I tell you, they're, they're pretty top tier when it comes to cheap confectionery. Oh. <sighs> Almost there. Almost there. Oh. This is a lemon pot. It's a little small, actually, but this was the only one I could find. It's really lemony. Final furlong. Strawberry tarts. Yeah, I specifically left these to the end because I love a creamy tart. I can't lie. Especially ones with the... I, I don't typically enjoy desserts with fresh fruit in them that much. But when it comes to cream tarts, a little kind of strawberry jelly in there with a fresh... Fresh strawberry in the middle. Something a bit special about that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. <clears throat> the chance of me actually getting to sleep tonight is almost zero. I forgot about the milkshake. <sighs> uh. 
All right, there we have it. That was um, nauseating. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, catch you the next one. Too much cream.